Hey everybody, it's Al and welcome to Body Reset for Sustainable Fitness. Glad you could be here today. I am excited because I get to demonstrate one of my favorite exercises. And it's actually gonna be the subject of a month, uh, it's a month long subject for us at Rethink Fitness. So March, the whole month of March is clamshell month. What are clamshells? Uh, clamshells are a, are a hip and butt exercise, um, but they're also a, tr a really good trunk exercise. It's gonna really fire up the larger muscles in our lower body and get them really, uh, uh, get them in working order and get them properly moving. So that as the early spring comes and we start moving around more, our larger muscles are activating the most because that's, that's what you hopefully want the larger muscles to do the lion's share of the work and the smaller muscles to do smaller things. Um, and so this helps to ensure that that happens. Um, how does one do clamshells? Uh, you can do them with no, um, you can do them with no resistance or with resistance you can, um, you know, you could put a band like this, which is pretty light. Um, you know, you would put it somewhere between um, around your thighs go something a little harder like this which is a little more a little tougher That's what I like. <laughs> um, you can do cloth ones this is a tight one uh, there are some for larger or taller people some for shorter people any kind of band um, and any kind of elastic that you have you actually don't even have to use one of these things that I'm using um, I'm going to be using the probably one of these lighter bands today as I am sore. Um, so let's get down to the floor and talk about clamshells. All right, a clamshell is so named, <coughs> excuse me. Um, a clamshell is so named by the shape of your body, specifically your, your lower body and the movement that you do. And so what's happening is I'm laying on one side, my hips, are stacked on top of each other. I have this, which I'm using as a wall, and I, I, I invite everyone to start these, and even if you already do them, try them against the wall. So push your entire back against the wall so that you're on your side. Yeah, good. Your hips are stacked. Now you're gonna start breathing into your lower back to get some of the arch out of the back to start turning on all the core muscles. The key to this exercise is stabilization. You don't want the hip to move. It is stacked, it's perpendicular with the floor. The top hip is stacked right on top of the bottom hip and they stay still. What we're practicing is that they, this large muscle and these large muscles help to move a part of your lower body without your hip moving. And what keeps that from happening is your upper body. So this is really important. I want you to really breathe into your back so that you almost feel your lower back begin to press against the wall. And in order to do that, in order to breathe in and pull my back into this, I'm already tightening my, my stomach. And so if you ever get to the situation and you sound like you're talking like this, you're in the right spot. <laughs> so that just means that your body is having a hard time contracting two different muscles in the same area. It's no problem. So once you really spend a little time stabilizing this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take everything in the bottom. So for me, this is my right side. So my right leg, my right hip, my right rib cage, my right shoulder, my right arm, I'm gonna press that down into the floor. I keep breathing and now that I'm pressing everything down, then keeping my feet together, I wanna raise my top leg up as high as I can go and then bring it back. And I'll move up the floor so you can see better. And I'm also gonna to try to do it properly. <laughs> so my feet stay locked together. Keep 
keeping the hips still. Um, if you don't have something to, uh, if you don't have a wall or something behind you, you can even take your hand, just take the back of your knuckles and place them behind your hip and hold it still there. And if you feel your hip digging into your knuckles, you know that that, that hip is moving around. So, so I'm gonna hold mine and take a deep breath in. Press everything down, lift up. I'm squeezing my glute muscle. Good. What I'm also trying to do is this thigh bone here, the bone that goes into the hip. You're pressing all the way up so that the knees are pressing together. And then you're pressing all the way down so that both knees are pressing toward the floor. And then reverse, they go opposite each other. And then they press in the same direction. And they go opposite. Your hip often wants to move. You gotta tighten up around here. <sighs> The other thing that's happening here is that there's rotation. This thigh bone that connects into your hip, the bone itself is rotating. So when you lift the knee up, you're externally, you're turning that bone out as much as possible. Then when you go to come down, you switch it, you turn it, you try internally rotate it, but you push it down. And if you do it right, you feel it even more. <laughs> so it's one of those things that if it hurts more, you're doing great. So I'm gonna try this again. Externally rotate, internally rotate, externally rotate, internally rotate, externally rotate, internally rotate. I'm looking for the friction point. When I lift my hip, I mean, as I lift my knee, at some point, it's gonna to start to wanna to move my hip. So you're looking for that spot. And then taking a breath in and holding that hip still and seeing if you can raise the knee just a little bit more and then bring it back down and press. Drive the bottom leg away, press the top leg up, keep that hip coming up. Oh. This should be nice and warm now. To go ahead and stretch it, I just lay here. Or if you want, you can take your, your top leg and if you can lay it on the floor a little bit close to you, um, lay it over top of the other leg. You should feel that stretch all through here. All right, let's switch over to the other side. It's everybody, let's try this again, same thing. So same setup. This is my hip injury side. This is the side I didn't want to do. <laughs> okay, get my belt buckle up. Making sure I'm stacked and perpendicular to the floor with my hips. Getting some air into my back so my back's not really arched that much, if at all. Belt buckles up. Tightening my stomach, breathing out. Keeping my stomach tight and breathing in again. And start pressing that. <sighs> left side down to the floor, my left knee, my left hip, my left arm, my left uh, ankle. And trying to keep this still, separate the knees, they press in opposite directions. That thigh bone turns out and then internally the thigh bone tries to turn inward and lower it down and press them both down. That's really important. A lot of people will come to rest here. And so if your hips, everybody has different sized hips, you know, if your hips are a little bit wider proportionally to your body, you won't get as much of a stretch. Um, be that as it may. All right, I'm gonna reset. Belt buckle up.
and press and down. Press down. <clears throat> Even if it's a little bit, <sighs> I'm trying to externally rotate that thigh bone and then internally rotate it when I press back down. I don't care how high the knee goes. What I care about is how much you feel it back here and how much this is struggling to keep your hips still. The key to this is that you always have to be worried about your trunk. The stabilization is half the battle. Increasing your range of motion that takes like two weeks. Learning how to stabilize, that can take <laughs> months and months and months. Uh. 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 And finish up oh. I have like, uh, a labrum issue and I, we've just started moving doing more stuff with it this week and it's talking to me <laughs> but it feels good to at least it's talking all right flip over to the other side Excuse me. Getting everything set. Belt buckles up. Breathing in. Tightening my stomach. Breathing in again. Making sure everything is tight here. The hip is staying still. You can even use your hand to help keep that step, uh, that hip still. And now I want to press up, turn out, press down, turn in. Bottom leg is pressing into the floor. The top leg is pressing away. And then they're pressing together both down. Remember, you're looking for the friction point. You're looking for the point at which if you go any high, your hip's going to move. And that's where you want to make the fight. So it doesn't matter if your leg only comes up a little bit. If you're really feeling it in the glute muscle, that's awesome. I always feel that people who are not good at this have it better. Because when you're not good at this, Man, you only have to do a couple and already you feel it working. When you get really good at this, you have to do hundreds in order to really wake it up sometimes. Because uh, these muscles are always working and once their endurance starts to get better, they just never wear out. Uh, twist the bone open. Twist the bone closed press. Opposite press with the knees, both press in the same direction down, keeping the hips still, taking breaths to help that, and then pressing back down. And you just want to keep going nice and steady. Notice I'm giving myself a lot of time to when I get to the top, even if it's a little bit, I'm squeezing my glute, I'm pushing that friction point. Pressing into the floor and then coming down and pressing the other way. And I'm making sure I'm going slow, 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 slow. Press one, two, ah, down one, two, nice and slow. The first form break in this is speed. Ah. Uh, 
Let's get three more. <laughs> I'm forgetting to twist. Open up that thigh bone, twist it open and close it as you press it out. One more. And close it as you press it out. Oh, 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 go ahead and let that rest. So now I'm gonna give everybody a chance to go get a ball. Uh, I'm gonna be using one of these balls. This is a lacrosse size ball and it's a little spongy. Um, you can use any size ball you want. You can use a big ball like this. You can use a hard lacrosse ball like this. You can even use one of these. If this is all you have, is all you have is a peanut, you can use just one end of it, no problem. So this is what we're gonna do. <laughs> Whatever side you were on, get on that side. <laughs> all right. So I'm getting back into clamshell position. And then I'm gonna take the ball and I'm gonna put it somewhere underneath my bottom knee and my bottom hip. So I'm gonna take my top leg, I'm gonna lift my top leg up and place my foot on the floor behind me. Then I'm gonna lift, for me, this is my left leg, and I'm gonna place the ball right underneath it. Anywhere you want, from the knee to the hip. And then I'm gonna replace my legs. Now for most of you already, this is really, really hard. So this, if this is really painful, take that top leg back off. The top leg is actually an intermediate. And, and you're just gently rocking your legs. I'm gonna try a little bit more pressure. Oh. This is your IT band. There's several trigger points there. Some people feel it all the way up in their neck. Some people feel it tingling down into their legs. They'll feel all kinds of stuff. So, but <clears throat> we've been on that for about 30 seconds, probably a little bit more. Now I want, so I was right there. So now I want you to go to another spot. So I'm gonna go a little bit higher up and do the same thing. <laughs> Yikes, ouch, yow. <laughs> When you encounter pain spots, one of the first things that your body does is it shortens its breath, shortens its breath until eventually it's holding its breath. Which is why we love the yoga so much because it really does remind you, first things first, breathe. Inhales are to activate your body to get ready to move. Exhales are to activate motion. I'm gently trying to do a clamshell now. But now I got a ball underneath me. So you're gonna have to gently start pressing down into that ball in order, in order to lift the leg. Because remember to do this, we press the bottom leg down, we press the top leg up. There's pressure both ways. Ah, <laughs> and then bring it down. If this is painful, and when I say painful, I mean like a five or a six out of 10 pain scale or more, just move it to another spot. You don't have to be on the most painful spot. You technically don't need to be on a painful spot at all. As long as you feel pressure. So this spot that I'm in now, I just moved it because that other spot was tender. I moved it a little bit further down my leg toward my knee and I'm in a spot now that's tight I can feel it but it's not nearly as tight as before and I like it it's a lot, a lot more comfortable 
And the pain over time is starting to radiate. And as I sink into that ball, the ball, you know, digs into my muscle fascia. and starting to release stuff. <sighs> I like to alternate. I try a spot that's a little bit hotter. And then after that, I try a nice calm spot so that I don't get into my head, you know, pain is good. Pain isn't always good. Oh. So I just drew my knees up a little bit. So now the ball is a little bit farther in the back of my thigh. Oh. I'm gonna very gently just to a little clamshell. I'm basically doing this to just to make sure that I'm in the right position. Because we've done enough clamshells now so that if your hip starts to go back, you'll feel it. That really does put a lot of pressure on there. And I'm gonna get two more. And one more. Ah. Uh. Lift the top knee up, place your foot on the floor behind you, keeping your leg still. So the, my whole thigh bone stays still, my knee stays still. My whole thigh bone is pressed against the floor and that ball is somewhere under there with it. That stays still and I'm gonna slowly extend my lower leg and bring my lower leg. The most difficult part is not moving this thigh bone. And the pain that I feel now is coming across the muscle. And you'll feel in all kinds of spots. Again, if a spot becomes really hot and hurts a lot, move it an inch away. Move it to the, to the spot that kind of hurts. It doesn't have to be the worst spot. Oh. I'm always surprised at how tight my sides are. It doesn't matter how much stuff I do. Whenever I get down on the balls, <laughs> my T bands are usually a little tight. <laughs> I can move it to another spot. So can you. I'm going to bring my brother up. I'm going up toward the hip. Set myself. Ooh. Gently pressing into the ball, pressing your bottom leg into the floor and pressing your top leg up while your lower trunk keeps that hip still. Lift the knee, place your foot back behind you. Lift your other leg. You can bring it out. Let's go to one more space, one, one, one more place. Try and find a little spot somewhere that you haven't felt before, whether it's a good spot or a bad spot. Hey, that one's kind of in between. So I'm gonna test myself, belt buckle up. Get some air into the back, stack my hips. So now I'm on a spot here. <laughs> I'm more like kind of underneath the thick muscle belly. And when I first laid on the spot, it was fine, but now it started to hurt quite a bit. <laughs> so I'm going to lift up. I'm going to move it just a little bit, an inch or two over. And oh, there you go. Okay. So I still feel most of the ball that the work is, uh, the, most of the work that the ball is doing but it's not excruciating. And then always work on your breathing. Couple of small little clamshells. 
press that ball down. Oh, good. Lift the top foot, bring the, uh, lift the top leg, the top knee, and bring the top foot back behind you. And then just slowly extend, flex and extend the lower leg. Again, you're trying to keep the knee. The knee is still. The knee itself doesn't move. Ah, oh. oh, I love that ball. <laughs> All right, let's go to the other side. <clears throat> okay, I'm setting myself in a clamshell position. Uh, my hips are stacked and they're both perpendicular to the floor. My belt buckle's pulled in. I've got some air in my back. My legs are bent at the knee and both of them are together. I'm keeping my feet together throughout this entire process when we're doing the clamshells. So let's just do a couple and then we'll put the ball under there. Uh, press both knees away from each other. And then turn the thigh bone in and come down, press in the same direction. Press the knees in opposite directions. Press the knees in both directions. Uh, excellent. All right. Put that ball in there somewhere. So this time, this side, I'm gonna start up kind of higher up my hip, toward my hip. Oh, and I had good reason to, it's quite tight up there. So as a result of the injury that I have uh, in my right hip, all of the muscles around that whole area are gonna be a little bit out of whack. So it makes sense to me that this side, for me, hurts a lot more than the other side. That's, that's normal. And whereas I like to establish the hot spots, so you're moving this ball around and you're kind of mapping out what part of your leg is tight, what part of your leg is less tight. But even though you're mapping out these hot spots, you don't have to live them. You know, find out where they are and then park yourself close to it, near it. Or it's, there's a little shade. Oh. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple of clam shells just to check. Press into that ball, wow, that really hurts. Ah. And here we really got to remember, you want to externally rotate, open that leg up, twist it open. And then you come down, twist it close as you press both legs down together. Opposite. Good. Let's go ahead and let it rest here for a little bit. If you feel like it, you can stay here. If this is too much, again, lift that left leg up, put the, put the foot back behind you. And then you can also do this if you want to start flexing and extending that lower leg. Again, we're trying to keep the, the knee still. The knee itself doesn't move. The thigh bone stays on the floor. But below the knee extends and flexes. You need to move the ball to a spot that's a little bit more palatable. That's fine.
so this side for me, there are a lot less places that are not hot. <laughs> so you'll notice I'm moving around a lot. So all the stuff we've been doing this class is starting to heat up that side. And so that's okay. It's okay that one side, this side is way better than this side. This side is going through something different. That's, that's normal. Oh, there we go. Excellent, nice job. You can go ahead and roll that ball off camera. Um, if you have, um, if you're using a band, go ahead and put the band around your, your thighs. And give everybody a minute. And let's go ahead and start back up with our clamshells. We're gonna go ahead and stay on this side uh, since we haven't been really doing a lot. Now, remember what I said earlier on the first form break of clamshells is speed? Well, that is true, except when you're doing speed ones. <laughs> so we're gonna try to do ours faster, but we do have to realize that when we increase our speed, <clears throat> the ability of our hip to move around is greater. So I'm really driving my back hard against whatever it is that you're using as a support back there. So that, yeah, so when I try to take my fingers and stick them in between the wall, this, this cushion and my, my hip, I can't, it's really hard to get it, get it in there. And I want it that close. Take a breath in, pull the belt buckle up, breathe out, engage your lats. We're going to start slow for the first five, and then we're going to double time. So we're gonna do a series of double times. Here we go. Twisting out and up and twisting down. Twisting out and up and twisting in and down. Good. Press the knees away from each other and then press the knees into both directions. And one more time. Good, and now we're gonna double the time. Down, up, down. The hard part about this is keeping the hips still. I'm always surprised on how oftentimes when I'm in this, my butt hurts, but I'm spending all my mental energy on trying to keep this belt line nice and still, and then drive. And let's double time it a little bit more. And one, two, three, four. The hard part here is the twist, 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 twist. Beat, breathe deep. Keep that hip forward. Keep that hip still. Keep going. If you've tired out, rest, rub it out for a little bit, and then jump back in whenever you want. That's fine. Uh, uh, let's get five more. Four, three, two. And one. Ah, yes. Ah, hopefully, you're feeling this in through here. Ah. So, March is clamshell month. <clears throat> March is the time starting in March 1st, and you really want to hit clamshells hard because the stabilization that the clamshell gives you 
um, you know, at the hip, the stuff that you really use all over with all kinds of movements. And it's one of the first movement compensations that we make. We'll, we'll move that hip around to get us range of motion at one of the extremities. Um, so we're gonna switch to the other side. We're gonna uh, do that other side without the, without the ball and then we'll double time. And then, uh, and then I think we'll be done for today. And so hopefully you guys can go. Um, if you can um, try and try this without doing anything else, you know, just when you're sitting down watching TV or if you're listening to a podcast or if you're, you know, playing with your cat, you can sit there and you can just try to do little clamshells, you know, and try and keep your feet together, and see how far apart you can get without moving the hip. Um, Cause a lot of this is, it's motor neural sequencing as well as strength. So now that I've spoken enough to give myself a little rest. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> nice and long through here, belt buckle up. Breathe it into the lower back so there's not so much arch there. My hips are stacked perpendicular with the floor. Pressing my bottom leg down. Breathe it into my lower trunk, breathe it out. Keeping that hip still. And we'll do a couple really slow. Good, we want to turn that, open that leg up and turn it out and bring it back down. Good, lift. Good, one more here. Excellent, now let's double time it. Lift, down, lift, down. Press away, press both together down. Press away. Watch that hip. If you have to error, I'd rather your hip be too far forward than too far back. I'd rather you only get little ones. Because then you're not reinforcing your hip moving. That's one of the things we're trying to do. Breathe in, tighten these oblique muscles, tighten all of the lower trunk muscles. And while they're tight, press, 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 press. Ow. <laughs> All right, last set. Let's see if we can double time from here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The faster you go, that means some of them won't go up very far. Some of them you miss. Your sequencing is off. Don't move the hip. Keep the hip still. You'll fix it on the next one. Uh, don't buckle up, don't buckle up. Uh, 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 we say, eh, let's get 10 more, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Uh, <laughs> Good work. I wanted to take a lot of time and talk about these clamshells because it's a lot of stuff to, to think about, you know, keeping yourself stacked, keeping your, your lower core, um, you know, uh, uh, contracting so that your hips can stay still, keeping your one leg pressed one way, one leg pressed the other, then they're pressed both ways. There's a lot that can go wrong. And so when you do, do these, remember, you know, uh, going slow is always better. You wanna get into the habit of when you notice you're doing something wrong on one, fix the next one. Don't worry about the mistake that you're doing. Just remember it and so that you can set up better for it on the next rep. 
So this is Al Condi with Rethink Fitness. We hope you had a good time and I hope you do some clamshells now. Um, <laughs> clamshell March is the big contest is everybody tries to do 200 clamshells a day for the whole month. So start practicing because starting March 1st, it's a race. I <laughs> uh, hope everybody's doing well. Thanks a lot.